Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome to Battle Brothers with me, Cornish Knight, and this is going to be a new Let's Play series for me. I am in. I really love this game. I won't go into too many details right now, I'll dive straight in. It's basically a mix of XCOM meets Mountain Blade Warbands, which are two of my most beloved games of all time. So I've been really looking forward to playing this, and let's start a new campaign. We shall call them our mercenary company. You play basically a, a group of mercenaries in a, I suppose you could call it a dark fantasy world. We shall call them the... We could call them the Cornus Knights. I think that's more appropriate since I won't actually be appearing in this. So called them the Cornish Knights. Now I have been playing beginning difficulty recommended for players new to the game, more starting funds, lower prices, less challenging contracts and opponents, able to carry more resources at once. Providing a balanced playing experience that can be quite challenging, recommended for veterans of a game or the genre, expert, obviously. Now I love it. I love this game. How the fact is, it goes from beginning to veteran to expert. There's no normal difficulty, so we're just gonna put it on veteran. Iron Man mode disables manual sa saving. Only a single save will exist for the company, and the game is automatically saved during the game and on e and on ex exiting it. Losing the whole company means losing the save. Note, but on weaker computers, auto saves may result in the game pausing for f for a few seconds. We'll stick it on an Iron Man. We'll be a bit outlandish now. Let's. What banners should we go for? I'm, gonna, I'm thinking of that one because it has all the colours of the Cornish flag. It's not in the right order. It should be a white cross on a black flag. But um, none of the other ones are really sounding Cornwall to me at the moment. But yeah, so we'll go with that one. We'll go with this one here. Interestingly, um, you actually get if you look at you get two kinds of the Cornish flag. You get the white cross on the black background, but you also get um, uh, a basically a black flag with golden coins on it because Cornwall used to be Cornwall has a very cl close linking link with um, well mining and various money making en enterprises and it was stannery like you get a lot of stannery towns around in Cornwall which is basically um uh how just been a stannery town they're basically sort of like minting towns I suppose um where the raw ore would be brought in extra sources raw tin and iron into um money which is really good the last battle it all went wrong two days ago the company was hired to track down Hoggett the weasel and his band of raiders but it was them who found you first, an ambush, some joke about a horse cut short by an arrow to the throat, arrow shoot, shoot, shooting in from everywhere and, no, and nowhere, men holler and, and scream great volumes before death. As the hail subsides, you draw your weapon with the rest of your men only to collapse to your knees. An arrow has punctured your side, you shout in pain. A hurried glance sees the men charged without you to make a valiant last stand, met in, for, met in force of steel, classes of steel. You meet the eyes with you meet your you, sorry, you meet eyes with the captain. A last nod before his throat is cut. You're left in command now, of what few men remain. Trembling in pain, you le lean on your sword and with all all the will you can muster, slowly rise again. To the end, to battle, brothers. Okay, this is this our this is our party. We have Henrik. We have Gulf the Falcon, and we've got Hartwig. I am going to be renaming these guys to some of the people that I know in real life, just because I thought it'd be a bit funny. Let's see who can we hit. Let's try hitting this guy. Ooh, I missed. That's not good. I'm gonna jump my. He's got a double-handed axe, I think, yeah, so I'm going to jump him up there and get ready for this guy to charge. 
that's that's the bloke who set this a lot. This is basically Hogwarts, Hogwarts the weasel. He's fleeing. So I'm going to send Hartwig here. Spear ward. Prepare to immediately attack an opponent that attempts to move into melee range. And on a hit, prevent the opponent from closing it in. Target's hit will receive half the damage of a normal thrust attack. Cannot be used while already engaged in melee. Let's try that. You've got this bloke moving up. Oh dear, that's not good. Need to get rid of him. Ooh, like our blow cleaves into him, cutting deep into his like his his leg muscle. You, he, he screams and there's blood and he staggers back. Wait and, and you wait for the inevitable counter attack. Henrik sees his opportunity as the man staggers back and he sort of yanks his crossbow off and basically fires point blank into him. Only now he has in the situation where he has no weapon to he has no time to reload, so he must quickly yank out his dagger and prepare for the inevitable counter-attack which is to come his way. Hartwig, seeing the, seeing the problem, dives forward, yanks out a spear and jabs it at the bandit thug in front of him. Unfortunately, the man's armour blocks a lot of the damage. And the thug lays into Grolf, beating his armour badly and sort of knocking him backwards. As the as the nasty looking blunt mace bruises muscle and bone, Henrik, seeing the distraction that the other band, who is now bleeding desperately, is in, lunges forward a knife and stabs it into his throat. Blood goes everywhere as he tumbles to the floor, and quickly he he attempts to yank out his crossbow and reload it to try and save what little few of his comrades remain. Meanwhile, Geralt takes a deep breath, quite badly winded by this point, as you can see on like, his fatigue bar. Fatigue builds up as the battle goes on, because all your actions take fatigue. He takes a deep breath and lunges at the man, and in one fell swoop decapitates him in a massive spray of blood. And with that, the battle is over. Geralt is slightly wounded. He'll be back on his feet by tomorrow, and the others are not too badly off. You manage to recover basically a, basically a mace, and rather with a hefty looking mace from, from amongst the bodies. Unfortunately, the rest, of, the rest of their gear is too badly damaged by the brutal struggle, and your companion's equipment is seemingly wrecked. You gather what you can, and you leave the battlefield. You're alive, you've won. Adrenaline fades and in, in its wake you can't help but sink back to the ground. It looks like you won't be holding a sword again anytime soon. Gritting your teeth, you snap the arrow shaft. Your chest heaves for for breath, feeling the pain well up well up in your lungs. Yeah, just gotta quickly say, snapping the arrow shaft is a pretty bad thing to do. You shouldn't historically they didn't do it. They would cut an arrow shaft so it was sort of so it wouldn't catch, but you wouldn't snap it because the arrow shaft gives you relative location of where the arrow head, the arrow tip is embedded in the body. And that's the thing that you want to be able to find and pull out because you can't actually, if you pull an arrow shaft out, the arrow tip stays in. It's one of the me mechanisms they designed to make them pretty nasty weapons. Most of the company lies dead. All those men you fought with side by side in the sealed war this past year, and Haggart did did justice to his name, running like a weasel. But people mock him to uh, that, that, sorry, running like the weasel that people mock him to be. What now? A voice says from behind. It's Geralt the Falcon who sits down beside you, bedding his bloodied axe on his legs. He turns. You turn to him and reply, but before you can before you can answer, he continues. The captain's dead. They slit his throat. He was a good man and a damn good leader. But all it all it took was one mistake. That makes you the one in charge now, doesn't it? Hog Hartwig joins the two of you, still breathing heavily. Let's save the anointments for another day. I figure we give the men a good burial and return return to Watal. 
Wadal, the Klektar Pei, the Weasel's men are slain after all, and even, the, and even if the man himself tucked, tucked a tail and run, we ought to see, it, see to that arrow sticking out of, out of you before we lose another man. So be, so be it, you mutter, as you stagger back up to your feet, being helped by the remaining few companions. Right, and welcome to the world of Battle Brothers. Now, Battle Brothers is still in early access, so there are one or two, there are some features that are still missing. But this game is already chock, chock full of content, absolutely chocked full of content. Um, here's our company, all three of them. I'm still wounded, so I will not be basically being able to help. We have Hartwig. You can. All this stuff is customizable. You can change their appearance. You can change their dress. You can change their names. I am quickly going to change the names to some of the people that I know. Um, I'm going to turn Hartwig into my long, t well, into my often adventuring companion, the Furax. The Furax, and we will turn Geralt the Falcon into Rogue the Falcon. These are all people that I basically have contact with. I thought it would be nice. Plus this is a rather a rather dark and grim game so they'd probably get a kick out of watching themselves getting killed. Now I find this sound entertaining. They called him Wiseman the Blade but he's basically he, He's in Henrik the Blade, but he's basically got a crossbow. Um, but I'm going to call him Wiseman the Blade. Now, Wiseman is armed with a light crossbow that's in need of a bit of repair. We've got Rogue the Falcon. His gear is really bruised up. Basically, everything takes like repairing in this game. Now here are your stats. The little stars that you see next to particular skills mean they get like bonus. See look, melee skill um, determines the basic property of hitting a target with a melee weapon. Such as with a sword or spear, this can be increased as the character gains experience. Basically these little stars that you see next to them mean they'll get additional points to level up if if when, when you level up totally. Because what happens is you get a level, you get points to spend. The more stars next to a particular trait, the more points will be given to you to spend in that, as because like they're of a speciality. For example, um, the Fuax has sp has point additional points to be spent in health, in resolve, and in stamina when well, in fatigue, while Rogue has extra points to put into melee skill and into resolve and into melee defense, as and as does Wiseman. Now I won't spend too much time talking about this, we'll get on this, like a whole perk system and the game is really, it is a really lovely game. I just quickly paused it now, our job is to return Wide Tal, Wide Dal Tal. I apologise if I'm pronouncing some of these names wrong, these are basically North, like Northeastern European names or North North European names and I'll, I struggle to basically speak them, I do apologise. Whitehall, Whitehall, Whitehall. So basically, this is our character. As you can see on the map, this is the amount of money we get. Our provisions, will, which will last us about eight days. Each person basically eats us two provisions a day. Our repair tools and supplies, assorted tools and supplies, keep your weapons, armor, and helmets and seals in good condition. One point is required to repair 15 points of item of basically 15% of the item's condition running and the supplies may result in weapons breaking in combat and will leave your armor damaged and useless. Basically we've got enough to last us four days, we've got not very much ammunition and not much supply so we're, all in all we're relatively not in a good position. Um, fortunately we have no injuries which is really nice, all our characters are relatively... I mean Rogue has got a little bit of, he's like down a bit on hit points, but that's fine. The others are, are fine. I mean, the Fuax and Wiseman are basically both holding on fine. Wiseman proved himself a vicious cutthroat of a person. Return to Wade Wide Tail. Um, 
what a sorry display it must be for the onlookers as you arrive from Whitehill. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries down in their luck. The man who hired the company days ago. Menrad, the treasurer, no doubt expected you to return in more glorious fashion. Still, he welcomes you to his house again and offers bread and wine while a servant fetches a healer. Few words are exchanged except for the occasional grunt and wheeze as the elderly man with shaky hands tends to your wounds. Finally, Menrad, Menrad the trainer, uh, treasurer, breaks the silence. So, how did you fare? A pin knife for your a pin knife's for your skin. The first of many stitches to come. You grit your teeth. Till you think you hear one break. Main main rad the treasurer takes on a grave look and he quickly hides his face behind a behind a drink of wine. Finding breath, you give the answer to his asinine question. We killed all of Hoggett's men. You you rasp, but he managed to elude our blades in the end. The healer waves around. A glowing fire poker, suggesting he suggesting he wants to push it into your wound. You nod, and he does so. For a moment, that's all there is. You are not a man, but a pinch of fire, flesh fresh from the flame. And as the bur as the pain subsides, you come to see that that Minrad, uh, Mainrad's the treasurer's mood has lightened. So all his men are dead. Then, well, that's that. Well, that's that's. I see. A good thing you removed that threat from wide, wide tail. But that man truly is elusive. We expect to get paid for this, you grumble. Menrad the treasurer gasps. Well, naturally, I gave, me, I gave my word, didn't I? A hundred crowns for every man. So as I see it, that's four hundred crowns for the four of you. He gestures towards his servant, who nods and hands a wooden chest from which he takes the pay. I wonder, may I make use of your services once more? I'd very much like to end, end this headache, and end this headache that is hog, hog at the weasel once and for all. And I would pay you again, of course, another four hundred crowns, shall we say? Rogue the falcon scoffs and turns to drink more wine, but the fuax stands to speak. Yes, the company is in ruin, but we can rebuild. You know Rogue, you know Rogue the Falcon, he, he'd drink, sorry, you know Rogue the Falcon, he'd drink for crowns away and end up begging on the street, and Wiseman the Blade wouldn't fare any better chasing the women folk until one stoved his rotten head in. We need the Cornish Knights. It's all we have. What do you, what you say, what's your say, Captain? Rogue the Fal Falcon burps and raises his cup to you. Wiseman the Blade playfully thumbs his nose and nods. You're their captain now, and your men are and your men look to you for a leadership. Yes, we have some unfinished business with Hoggart, you mutter, as images of the previous captain de captain's demise dances across your vision. Men round the treasurer claps his hands, hand satisfaction. Very good, excellent. I need some time to find out where Hoggart is, hide is hiding his hide now. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies that you'll be... So, so, sorry. Stocking up on supplies so that you'll be good and ready to end this when the time comes. I shall see you in a few days' time at the le at the latest. As you leave the comforts of Men Menrad the Terrasurer's house and stand on the outskirts of Wide Whitetail again, the Fuax seeks seeks word with you. What is it? What is it? We need is more men, Captain. I know I gave a big speech back there, but we ain't. Ain't nothing without more warm bodies in the ranks. We should hire at least three more cell sword hands. Buy some decent weapons and dress them in the best armor we can afford. The man pauses, and gla pauses to glance around. I bet this bon budunk, budunk of a town. Sorry, I bet this budunk of a town's got a, a desperate. Uh, sorry, bleeding. I bet this budunk, budunk town's got a desperate desperate present to looking for a new life or we could travel hell hell of hovel hell of hovel in the southeast them city folk aren't always as ha hardy as, the, as these country pump bumpkins but they're more likely to fend men with fighting experience stopping to rest there and may sell better weapons too that's what we'll do that's what we shall do then you declare firmly A village living off lumber and anything the forest offers. 
Right, this is basically what Whitetail. It has a very like Anglo-Saxon sort of feel to it, a lot of wooden houses. This is like a very much like how like Anglo-Saxons are sort of sown to sort of live during the time period. They're like Saxon, sort of like Scandinavian, sort of early medieval period. We've got a, a Fletcher who basically handles with range weapons as you can see. Some light crossbows, a nice crossbow, some hunting bows. We haven't really got enough to buy any of this stuff. I mean, it's worth 100 and they're charging us 125 gold for it, so we can't really afford any of it. Hire new men for your mercenary company. The quality and quantity of volunteers depends on the size and type of settlement as well as your reputation here. And then we have a marketplace. Let's see who can grab can't afford any of them. I'm sorry, but Boyer, Hunter, Hunter, these guys are like way out of our price range. We just can't take it. Marketplace. And all this stuff is massively expensive. You can buy some more ammunition because we're a bit low. Um, A thick tunic, perhaps we could afford to grab for someone. I might do that. I might grab a thick tunic, a shield. We got the mace earlier. There's a pitchfork here. It's not fantastic condition. The thing is, we need tools to repair stuff. That's what we really need. We need supplies. So we'll grab some food. Interestingly, this is what I like about the system. If you press this button here, sort items, it automatically sorts everything, which is really nice. So you don't have to fiddle around with that, which is really cool. Cured venison. I mean, your provisions go off over time, so you have to be careful. We'll grab some cured meat on top of, on top of the ground grain we've got. So they're going to basically look like to have savoury... They're going to have pottage, basically, which is like savoury porridge. Those are herbs, medical supplies. We could buy some more, but we're okay at the moment. I might buy that pitchfork. It's going to take a knock out of our replenishing stuff, but we should be okay. We now need to go and grab some people to recruit, because honestly, that's a terrible pick. These guys are way out of our price range. I'm not paying that much money for them, to be honest. Right, so we're back into the world. We're already on mid midday. I've just paused it because time keeps ticking by. There's Hella Hovel. Hella Hovel. Okay, look, I'm gonna apologize if I murder the names in this. I I have problems speaking very complicated names out loud. I can say them in my head fine, but speaking them out loud is I find a bit of a challenge, so I apologize in advance both to the developers and to anyone from like the sort of like Norway or Denmark or Sweden because I believe these are very sort of like Scandinavian kind of Norse sounding names so it's or at least Germanic sounding names and it's I just have problems pronouncing them out loud so I try my best what do we have here ruins pig farms this the smell of a pig farm is just as distinct as the squealing sounds coming from the muddy pits pork chops produced here are usually sold in a nearby settlement. Brewery. This brewery produces large quantities of beer for both local taverns and traders. This stuff actually affects what, what goes on along the way. As a silhouette of Hellohovel appears on the horizon, Wiseman the Blade seeks word with you. Never been to Hellohovel before, mes before myself, but I've been around. These big cities are expensive, much more so than Wadtail and the other and the other villages like it, but the merchants have everything you need: weapons, armor, food. There's, and if if there's a smithy in Hellahovel, it's worth a visit too. Will be it will be expensive for sure, but they'll sell real weapons made for war, not just farming tools. He glances down at his hunting crossbow. We could also browse the wares in the marketplace. Of course, there's a few bargains to be made, but we also try to sell us stuff that will break apart if so much as sne as if you so much as sneeze on it. Don't get swindled by these cutthroat merchants, Captain. Rogue the Falcon sees fit to find his own opinion on what you should do. 
If there's a good tavern, I, I say that that's where we head first. Pay around for the company's coffers to get us all drunk for the night and raise our spirits. God knows we've earned it. Wise when the blade shakes his head. You say that every time we stop in, stop, stop in the town. Even when we ain't when we ain't even doing anything. You've got to remember that they're they're speaking a slightly older English, so the sentence structure and like how they speak is gonna be different. Come on. A stone keeps securing the surrounding tundra. Let's see who we can hire. Right, we need some cheap. Basically, we just need bodies. We need someone we can throw into this, even if they're not particularly good. So, who we've got? We've got Elbert de Fletcher, picking up picking up his trade from a long line of strong-sighted forefathers. Elbert is a Fletcher and Bowyer, playing his trade for royalty. His career came to an end when a bowstring snapped, cutting off the finger of a promising heir. Now, let, now Elbert, Elbert seeks a different path. If he can't sell bows, maybe he can use them. High background, bowyer, high range skill. Basically, everyone in this game has like backgrounds and traits, which will be a f which will affect stuff. For example, here, Guntram. Guntram. With no study work, Guntram is known as a day, day tailor, someone to ask whenever an extra hand is needed. Despite having no experience in battle. Starting to staring too deep into a bottom made him believe that travelling mercenary company seemed a good opportunity to clear his head. Basically, he's like a like a I suppose you could like an, a hourly rate of like zero contract um, employer. He's employee. He's basically something that you hire on when you haven't got any but when you just need an extra hand. So I think we've got to take him. He's going to cost us ninety gold. We're going to pay him seven gold a day. We're going to take. Edward, Edward got his eye. Um, Edward's got the eyes of a desert snake, and snap cards and snapping cards is his rattle. Orphaned by his, orphaned by his own birth, he always scrounged for a living by gambling with others. Wars have sapped most of the f of the fists from his card, most of the fists from his card games. Instead of waiting around, he figured he'd, he'd just go ahead and follow them. So basically, he ran out of people to basically cheat out of money because they went off to war. Right, so we'll take him as well. Actually, I should have probably taken him. He seemed like cheaper. Mm. The titles actually sort of hint at what some of their skills might be. So, for example, Todd Todd Jorin, Todd Jorin the Brave, will probably have quite high resolve. So we go with Valdemar. Valdemar, with a face contorted to the shape of one's knuckles, it's not hard to realise that. Valdemar is a career fighter, gaining notoriety as a fighter in Hohenskranzen meant he had to fight every single proud, boasting and drunk man who came his way. This man could murder a rock and injure a stone, a good addition to any outfit. So his background is brawler, 100% damage when unarmoured, high resolve, high melee skill and high maximum fatigue. We're going to take him. I need one more really. Now let's just see what our company got six so far. None of them have got any gear though, so we're going to have to pad them out. He's got a hat. So let's look, see just quickly what we've got. We've got, he's got impatient always acts first in the very first round of combat. He's got a specialization for hit points, fatigue, and resolve. Our Elwood has high melee and a specialization for melee. Range defense and fatigue, and Guntram has exceptionally high melee, rather good range skill as well, and good melee defense. I might make him. I'm gonna make him sort of like one of the front fighters. I'm gonna make him part of our shield wall. So what I'll do is quickly move these guys around. How does he look? Range skill. Range skill. Neither of these guys have particularly good talents and range skill. I'm loath to make him. I'm loath to make him range because even though he's got a, a trait for it, he's got more traits for melee. Plus, he's got quick trait, which means more initiative. Iron lungs plus five fatigue cover per turn. That's nice. He's tiny, which means he has ooh, 
15% less melee damage. That isn't good. Uh, I may just make this guy a ranged bloke. He won't be fantastic at, at it, unfortunately. Or I can just stick him with a... I might just give him a ranged weapon. I mean, like a, a pole, like a pole weapon, and basically so we can stab from behind cover. He won't do massive damage, but he'll do more than he currently is. Let's just grab some more supplies. Let's see. Do we have any cheap armor? Uh, padded circuit is not bad. I might grab that. Because I'm basically just looking for stuff which will give armor of some kind. Because at the moment, none of them have really got anything that will keep them from not having their heads stoved in. I'd rather not have to hire more people. So... I'll grab the arming cap. Grab the hood. I need another shield for somebody. Yeah, war dog. Um, I need some more tools as well. God, that's getting expensive. It's still a bit more pricey than I'm willing to pay, but I need to get some gear repaired because it's got we haven't got that much. Buy some food. God, this is getting expensive quickly. Uh, what did I get? I need to get a mate. I need to get a shield, and I need to get some kind of hand weapon for him. Something, nothing, nothing too expensive. We'll give him a butcher's cleaver. I mean, it's cheap. I don't really want to fork out loads of money getting them stuff in case they sort of keel over. And we can always loot stuff from the bodies. So we'll quickly jump back to my party. We'll give... I mean, he has high melee. I mean, he's got a talent for it as well. I don't know what to do. I mean, he's got slightly higher... I might actually, that's an idea. Um, I'll give him that. Give him that. Switch him over there. I'll give this guy the shield. This guy can have that. And the cleaver. And we'll put him there like that. So we have a little bit of sort of organization and we have some helmets and stuff to give out. I need to give this guy a, a helmet because he doesn't have any shielding so he's going to get absolutely hammered if I'm not careful. Just give him a bit of basic armor. Um, this is okay, it's not a fantastic setup. I mean, I need to get another ranged character really, but with the amount of money I've got, it's not is there anybody else? If I take him... Seems risky. Plus I don't know if I've got anything to equip him with, that's the problem. Uh, hard decisions, hard decisions. There's another thing in the tavern. In the tavern you can like hear rumours and stuff going on, which is always really useful. Oh, you can just buy a drink for people. Well, the patrons talk about this and that. You know of, you know, you know of Goss. What was it called again? To the northeast, not far from here, in the snow. Can't for the life of me remember what we what we used to call it. These guys will give clues and stuff. So he's telling us about something that's up in the northeast from here. I don't really want to go out there and explore it because, as you see, it will be somewhere up in in this frozen area, and I'll it'll be horrible to get up there. Um. I think we are just... What I'll do right before I call into this is I will quickly rename these people to people that I know. This guy will become... Cmod from Cmod Plays. This man will, be, this man will become... BDR. I won't use their full ones. Basically, this guy's VDR gaming. Wiseman is Wiseman T. Oh, sorry, Wiseman Y R T. Y Y T R. Sorry, Y T. So Wiseman Y T. And of course, you all know the Rogue and the Fuax. And for this lovely gentleman down here, will become 
Mr. Jack Williams. These are all like small YouTubers that I interact with, so I just thought it would be fine, f just be nice to sort of have them sort of like this. I can't promise any of them will survive. This game is really brutal, so if they all die, it's their own fault, really, enough. Nothing to do with me. Um, if you have liked, please press the like button. If you have subscribed, please press the subscription button. There will be another midweek madness episode coming up of this sometime later today, so please stay tuned. I've been Cornish Knight, and I shall catch you all next time on Battle Brothers. Goodbye. <laughs>